Well, welcome to New Creations Counseling. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So we have a special guest today. I'm doing well. If you can introduce yourself, please. Uh, my name is Nicole Logan. I am the director of Rise and Shine and also the creator of the director of Care Counseling, LLC. Awesome. And how long have you been counseling for? Oh, boy. Um, I want to say six years I've been counseling for. Okay. That, as far as temperament counseling, as well as personal, marital. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm so glad that I finally get to have you here. <laughs> I mean, I can't even tell you enough how long we've been speaking about these visions and you know things that we wanted to do in the past um when we when we were in school together you know mm -hmm. and it was it was a good it was a good time I mean seeing you grow so much in the field and, and knowing that you know that the, the passion that you have for healing and restoration it really I admire you a lot so I just want to let you know that in public oh uh, you're such a sweetheart <laughs> so I'm just I'm very happy and I'm excited Everybody's <laughs> probably wondering why I'm dressed like this, but I'm in character mode. So I... <laughs> that we are going to be speaking about temperaments and explaining a little bit more about temperaments. I decided to be my melancholy temperament. <laughs> One of my temperaments, because I have three different, I, I am a blended temperament. Uh, we, we're going to explain a little bit of this more. So I decided to be a melancholy and I will explain my outfit as we go through the um through the video so let's start with temperaments what are temperaments nicole so temperaments are your god-given innate if you are alone by yourself thrown on the island it would be how you truly are inside we all have learned behaviors and societal influences However, if you remove all of those um, factors and you just present yourself in the rawest form, you would be given your temperament. Absolutely. And um, one thing that I like to specify when speaking about temperament is, you know, how we have those three areas of ourselves, right? We have our temperament, we have our mask, which is our personality, right? I like to call it a mask because we could be whatever we want mm -hmm. with a personality, right? We're adapting, we're just being, for example, if you're in the office, you put your office voice. If you're with your girlfriends, your family, or, you know, your friends, you have your regular voice and everything changes, even your, your clothing, your appearance with your personality, right? It's your camouflage. Yes. And then we also have our learned behavior. Mm -hmm. What do you think about learned behavior? Oh my goodness, it's everywhere. Um, learned behavior could be positive, it could be negative, it could be beneficial, it could be a detriment. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on the experiences that we have, we can learn to be the best us, or we can also learn to be the worst part of us. <laughs> right. You know. <clears throat> And you know it's 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 amazing when you when you and when you encounter that first session right with a person when you don't know their temperament yet, and you start to see their body language and you the just the way they present themselves you could add them you could automatically read what they are even by the words that they use how they sit how they move how shy they can be or how happy and and you know and bubbly they can be and. Um, once they get to know themselves and they get to see that they have been acting on their learned behavior and not themselves is mind blowing. Yeah, I always um when I'm when I'm reading a temperament um analysis to um to anybody, <clears throat> I'm always um, you know telling them that how important it is to know your temperament right it's so important for you to know yourself so that way you can step into the purpose that God has created you for oh I think you froze as well as call into submission the weaknesses that we all carry Wait, you know you and froze for a minute give me one second 
go ahead. I'm so sorry. It's okay. So, you know, that learned behavior, um, it's so funny because like in, when you're reading a, a, an APS to somebody and they're like, oh, that's not me. Well, it's either you and you don't realize you're doing it or it's you that you've learned that it's society, um, it's not politically correct or a society or correct to a society. So we change our behaviors, we mask it, we, 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 we change it, we, we camouflage it and we learn to be acceptable. For example, I'm just going to use myself as an example. Um, in my temperament, I am sanguine and inclusion. And when it was brought to my attention that I could uh, get bored with conversation pretty easily and I can walk away from conversation, I'm like, that's rude. I'm like, I've never done that in my entire life. Are you kidding me? That's so, that's so, that's so rude. Like I, and I would get mad, you know, that, that, how dare you say that about me? And then one day it's so funny because God had brought it to my attention because I actually was having a conversation with somebody and I was done with the conversation and I turned my back in mid conversation. That person was talking to me, turned my back and started walking away. And I'm like, heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me, see? And I was just like, ooh, that's really bad. So I wound up having to turn around and look at the person and be like, I'm so sorry. I That was really rude of me. I don't really know why I walked away from you. And I, I apologize. You know, I know you were not done with the conversation. So I, 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 I apologize. So just finding those little nuances that, you know, can make you better, a better person. Um, knowing that I have to be more intentional with people and, and with conversation, I have to make eye contact. I have to be intentional about the conversation that we are in and, and not distracted. So it's, it's knowing your temperament is, is crucial. I think in, in just having relationships and, and just your relationship with God, you know, uh, knowing your temperament. So that way you can identify your strengths and your weaknesses as well as, you know, things that we've learned and picked up down the road. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, something that you said, you know, that sometimes we don't even know that we have those things. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you just bought a, a new car and you never see that car, you've never seen that car before while you're driving. And after you got that car, you see it everywhere. You're like, oh, my God, everybody has my car. So mm -hmm. when once you become aware of your tendencies, you start to see them even more. And this brings the awareness to yourself that you might even be walking in your weaknesses mm -hmm. or you need to sharpen your strengths a little bit more. Because, again, we all have, you know, weaknesses and strengths. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of how we're using those things that will determine the next step that we're going to take and, and how beneficial it's going to be for our future. And those tendencies that we have, that one tendency could be a strength and a weakness, depending on how you use it the situation that you are in. So I always tell, tell you know, um, some some temperaments are stubborn, right? And I tell, because the that usually has like a negative connotation to it, right? Like, oh, I'm not stubborn. Like, and I'm like, well, stubborn can be a good thing too. You know, it could make mean that you're immovable. So when you're doing the things of God and you're in his purpose and you are, are representing him, and somebody comes at you with a different view, you could be stubborn in that and you could be immovable, unshakable. And that stubbornness can also be a strength. You know what I mean? So um, when you're talking in terms of temperament, you know, your tendencies can be both a strength and a weakness, depending on the situation that you are presented with and, and the environment that you're in. Absolutely. Um, you know, another thing that I would like to talk about, it's the action under reaction, because a lot of people don't understand that we have both. Right. Mm -hmm. And in some temperaments, because there are some temperaments that you your reaction might be your action because mm -hmm. you act how you feel. Right. So for I'll give you a quick example. If you have an altercation with someone at your job and he's in a higher level or she's in a higher level than you are, your first reaction is I want to tell them off. Mm hmm. But your at is like your reaction goes through your your logical like you think about what action you're gonna take. So mm -hmm. you're more balanced when it comes to okay, what action am I gonna take? And that usually happens when we have blended temperaments. So you know, and again, quick example, I am a phlegmatic sanguine. So I know how to hold myself back. But yes, I know how to be social. But I just know how to put myself back to being unsocial or just more in the background kind of person. 
And and then some people may look at it as sometimes she comes off rude, but sometimes she's very friendly. But it's it's not that. Is that my react? My reaction is one way, but my action is totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, and you may see that a lot with within your 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 children a lot that you might not even understand why your children act a certain way and do things the way they do them at home, but then outside of the house they're totally different. Right. That's because their action and their reaction gets in the way of being how, like you said, politically correct, right? To be in front of people. So that's one of the things that I like to spend a lot of time teaching the client on explaining <laughs> the difference between the two. So that's like you're expressed, right? What you show yeah. everybody else versus what you really want right. to be or what you want in return, you know? Um, you know, a, a great example of that is also, you know, in control where you have that, um, even though it's not a blended temperament, but if you have, if you're sanguine in control, you want that independent dependent and you swing, you know, not necessarily that it's an action reaction kind of a, of a situation or express versus wanted. It's just that that swing, you know, you're, you're also talking about, you know, compulsivity, right? When you're compulsive in an area, that degree of that behavior or those tendencies are magnified, right. you know? Right. <clears throat> and um, another thing that I want to add into that, right? So it's like, you know, we were created, like you said, once, once we know our temperament, we know the way that we were created, right? And we know that we have a body, right? We have a spirit and we also have a soul, right? And our body has needs, right? The, the needs for our body are food, water, you know, whatever the body needs, rest, you need exercise, you need, that's what your body needs in order for your body to maintain and, and be strong, right? Our emotions, right? Our, the soul, what does, what do we need? We need socialization. We need control. We need approval. We need, um, you know, we need people, Right. And what, and, and what about our spirit, right? Our spirit needs to know that we have a creator and that we need to be connected to the creator to understand that there's something higher than us. So the moment that we, we starve one area of ourselves, we start lacking things. Mm -hmm. If you're not taking care of your body, you start to get sick right? You don't take care of your emotions, right? You don't feed your soul. What happens to, to your emotions? What happened to your soul? You become depressed. You start creating anxiety. You panic. Like there's, there are things that you're lacking. Same thing with your temperament. If you're not connecting with your creator, if you don't have that spiritual life inside of you, you start lacking, a, like you start lacking peace. You start lacking joy. You start lacking things and you start to feel voids within yourself. So I believe that's that true. understanding your temperament is mm -hmm. such a fulfillment in that area because majority of people are concerned about their body and their emotions, but mm -hmm. they are forgetting about who they truly are. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, okay. I think it's very important to know your temperament. I think you hit the nail right on the head, you know, knowing your temperament and knowing how um, God has created, like we had said in the beginning of the video, you know, knowing your temperament mm -hmm. is crucial because it allows you to understand your relationship with God and why you feel like, have you ever been like, man, Lord, are you still there? You know, uh, are you there? You know, and that's a question that a lot of sanguines have because we are so physical. We, we need that physicality. We need to know, we need to touch, we need to feel, we need to hear, you know, we are so sensory driven. We want everything in our face. We like the shiny things. We like this, we like that. And when it comes in terms of our relationship with God, especially if he's silent and, and using that sweet whisper voice, we may be like, are you there? I don't hear you. I, where are you? I don't feel you, right? Sanguins are very much into that feeling, you know? And if you don't know that about your temperament, you could really start questioning your relationship with God. You know, I can quickly tell myself, well, that's just your temperament needing, needing that physical touch from God, right? Right. Whereas a melancholy would be like physically, like, where are you? Like, I don't see you in black and white, right? So where are you? So just knowing your temperament and just knowing that can also 
help you when Satan tries to use those little thoughts, like God's not there, da, 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 da. you know, you're like, no, this is my temp. You know, I know this is just as me tapping into my weakness right now. Lord God, I give that to you right now. And I know that you are there with me. You said you will never leave me or forsake me. And you can start battling spiritually. Then at that point, knowing um, why you're feeling that way. Right. You know, a lot of times, like a lot of, a lot of times with mental health, you know, we don't know the why, right? Right. Why is my like this? Why is this feeling? What's triggering me? Like, why, why am I having anxiety? Why am I, you know, and you know, why is my kid acting like this or why, you know, why, why, why? And, um, your temperament can, and your temperament, knowing the temperament of your kids or your family or your spouse or just people around you. It can it can help you to understand why that person is acting in that manner, right. you know. So understanding temperament and understanding yourself um, is crucial, I think, in just in just every area, especially I mean, it, your relationship with God. It definitely has become one of the most important things for me because this is where I found purpose, you know. Because understanding myself teaches me to know that I am. It's mm -hmm. not just that I do right it's like I'm a human being not a human doer right that's, that's not all I am so even though there are so many offices to to Melissa right I'm a mom I'm a friend I'm a daughter I'm a sister there are so many things that I have to be mm -hmm. that discovering my temperament has helped me see who I am mm -hmm. right and 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 understanding my 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 identity understanding my purpose, understanding my tendencies and how I can use those things, right? Because again, God created me, created me in such a way that this is who I am. I'm going to be the best at it because this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we try to be something that we're not. And this is why we keep on failing and failing and failing. No matter how much you try to do something because either it's the trend or because this is what pays good money, right? Let's say in the career field, in the working field. But if this is not who you are, this is not where your passion is, you're never going to be fulfilled. You're going to hate your job. You're mm -hmm. going to hate what you do. And now you're wasting talents that you have that you've never seen before because you don't know yourself. Mm -hmm. So allowing yourself and giving yourself the permission to know yourself mm -hmm. is the most important thing in life. It's the best you. weapon that you can have. You know, because now you have power. Now, mm -hmm. knowing who you are, the value that you carry, knowing that you have so many qualities, right? And again, right. this is why I'm going to speak a little bit about my melancholy temperament. This is why I'm dressed like this, right? Because again, mm -hmm. the tendencies of a melancholy would be very, you know, very to myself, very genius prone, super intelligent. And their closet will always be black or gray. Mm-hmm. Right. This is this is like who we are and and understanding that I'm they, that we are creative and understanding that, you know, we're genius prone. And and again, and I'm speaking all about the, the strengths that a melancholy may have. Right. But then I come to my weaknesses. I'm an overthinker. You know, I, I, I don't like loopholes. I have I'm a planner. I have to plan everything ahead. I want to know where I'm going, who's going to be there. You know, what time are we leaving kind of situation? And it's like I need to have everything in such an order that sometimes I don't give myself the room for mistakes so I had to mm -hmm. learn that I had to learn yeah. to see myself as an imperfect person that I make mistakes and allowing myself to make those mistakes that that's what's giving me growth yeah I never understood that I just always wanted things my way I didn't I never wanted to ask anybody for help because they were just going to get in my way Mm -hmm. So I had to learn that I need people. I can mm -hmm. never fulfill my plan if I don't have people. If I don't so have you taking, that's I'm you talking. taking that weakness and say, okay, exactly. Lord, like help me with that. And 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 just because you know your temperament shouldn't be a end all be all. You throwing up your hands and being like, well, this is the way I am. So you know, Absolutely. take it or leave it, right? So we have to take those weaknesses and those things that I that aren't you know, lined up with the word of God, that, that, that may be a weakness for us. And we need to call that into the submission of God and accept help. Like you said, and 
or, you know, for me, being intentional with people and being intentional in that conversation, you know, so definitely, absolutely. That's great. Now, do you want to share a little bit about the five different temperaments? Sure. So I, give you, I give you the, the open floor to speak on the five temperaments and just flow. So um, the five temperaments um, are uh, sanguine, supine, choleric, uh, melancholy, and then the diplomat, the phlegmatic, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I guess like we would have to talk about each area um, and those temperaments within those areas. So I guess like when you're talking in terms of inclusion, the sanguine is your bubbly, outgoing, comedic person, loves the limelight, loves to be, loves people, loves to please people, you know, just is there, love in life, um, and likes shiny things and, you know, um, loves to talk, very talkative. That's your extrovert, um, that, that's your person who relates to people. And then you have your melancholy, who's the sanguine's direct opposite, right? Um, they, they, they're the loner, they are the introvert, they are task oriented, so they don't relate to people as well as they relate to tasks. Um, they are very selective with the crowd that they had they, they that they have and they they keep. Um, you have the choleric that um, is a charmer. You know they can basically meld into any situation and be that charmer. You know um, you want them to be outgoing, they'll be outgoing. Um, if they want to be, if it suits them and they want to be that quiet person, they could be that quiet person. Mm -hmm. um, then you have the supine, right? The supine is that indirect. I really want to be asked and, and involved, but I'm going to show you that I don't want it because that fear of rejection is so strong with them. Um, so, and then the phlegmatic, you have you have the diplomat. They, they're just very low energy. Yeah. You know, they get along with all five temp with all the temperaments the most, right? There's no clashing there. Um, they're just kind of immovable and shakeable because it takes too much energy to do all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. in a nutshell, um, those are your five temperaments. Um, you're you're in control. Uh, your melancholy is like you stay in your bubble. I'll stay in mine, and we are good. You have the choleric that likes to control everybody and everything, <laughs> including like themselves. Don't control. Don't control. They me. do not like to be controlled. No, they'll actually want to control you, and they will manipulate until they have that control. Mm -hmm. um, the phlegmatic, no matter how you try to motivate them, they're just gonna just be there. You know, I say they're the best negotiators. They are the best negotiators because they are that diplomat right yes. so they're going to find that common ground mm -hmm. and they are the best delegates because it's too much energy for them to do it by themselves so they're going to be the best delegates right mm -hmm. um to get somebody else to to do something um that supine hi <laughs> Can you please tell me which one should I buy? Should I buy the black or the brown? Like, I really don't know. But let me call somebody else and just double check what they may say. <laughs> they don't really want to make the decision. Ultimately, they want to be involved in the decision process, but they don't want to make the decision. Ultimately, it's too much stress. Um, and then you have uh, the sanguine in, in control. The sanguine is interesting because at one moment, they can be independent and don't tell me what to do. The next minute they swing to the other side and they're like, oh, but I really don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Just do it for me. You know, I don't really care. You know, whatever. Como si, como sa, you know, it'll all work out, you know, in the end. So um, they're very, see, fly by the seat of your pants. Now in an infection, um, sanguines are your affectionate, skin hungry. Like <laughs> huh? What'd you say? I said, I call them skin hungry. Oh, we are so. So hugs and kisses and just love very loving very just you just need to be told you're loved all the time the mushy gushy romantic flowers and gifts and show me I'm most important in your life you know um then you have the melancholy 
direct opposite. Don't touch me. Don't tell me you love me. Just show me you love me. Just cook for me, wash my laundry, and just, just be there. Just, just <laughs> exactly. be there. Exactly. Um, and then you have the cleric that, okay, it's going to be on my terms. I'm going to give you whatever you need, but it'll be on my terms. Right. You know, um, they don't necessarily need the hugs and the kisses. It's all on their terms, everything. Um, and then the supine is, I really want to be loved like the sanguine wants to be loved. But I'm going to show you like I'm a melancholy and be like, yeah. I'm going to show you that I don't really need it. So the indirectness in that supine, especially in the area of affection, should be addressed, especially if you have a mate. Right. You know, uh, they can be passive aggressive. Um, you know, they they tend to want people to read their minds. You know, so they can have a whole argument with their spouse in their head and they they've had that argument already. And then the spouse doesn't even know. Wait, this is the best part, right? This is the best <laughs> part. Well, you don't kiss me enough. You don't love me enough. You don't show me enough affection. OK, so two days later, I'm showing them affection. I'm telling them, I love. well, you're only doing it because I told you so. <laughs> yep. I mean, if you really think about everything that she just explained, how many conflict can we avoid if we know every everybody that's around us, their temperament? Mm -hmm. How much conflict would you avoid with your spouse? How mm -hmm. much conflict you will avoid with your children because you are treating them in a way that they want the opposite or they, mm -hmm. they just don't know even who they are. Or why from they, child like, to child. Absolutely. So from child. Yeah. It's so hard, you know. And and this, I'm telling you, once you already know even your own temperament, it's so easy for you to explain to people what you like and what you don't like, right? It it makes it so much easier for you to start building boundaries because you know what triggers your weaknesses. So now you know what boundaries to put against people. Right. And 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 then you you could recognize from afar when you're encountering a codependent relationship or association, you know, and all those things create a lot of problems. I mean, I tell people all the time, if you can know your temperament and your spouse's temperament before you get married. I, I can tell you, I, I, I'll use myself as an example. Uh, my husband and I are completely different temperaments. And, you know, because, you know, us both very well. And I mean, I'm on one side and he's completely on the other. And we had avoided so much conflict in our first year of marriage because we went into marriage knowing each other's temperaments, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, because you know the person's temperament, you can meet that person's needs their way. Yeah. Right? It's so important that us, uh, that we meet mm -hmm. other people's needs their way yes not our own way yes. right so for example my my um in my area of affection i need touching right my husband's he's very task oriented right so if i were to touch him he'd be like that doesn't mean anything to me i could care less if you're touching me in fact stop touching me because they're making me feel uncomfortable right, right? and just knowing that me doing things for him, me just be present in the house is enough for that melancholy. Yeah. Right. Whereas he knows at that point that, okay, she can, if, if I wash her car, she's going to come at me like, all right, yeah, whatever. I don't really care that you wash Can I get my hug now? Hello. <laughs> like, just tell me you love me, telling me I'm pretty, tell me I'm the greatest thing and give me, follow up with a hug and a kiss and we're good. Yeah. You know? So just knowing that for our first year of marriage, we were able to know how to communicate with one another. I knew at that point that he talks in terms of evidence and presentation of the evidence, the black and white. So when I come to him with an issue, I know I got to present the problem, evidence to back it up. I know it sounds so, so silly. Like, why would you do that? Like, yeah, that's kind of silly. Well, if you want to conflict resolute, then you're going to follow this these steps. So that way you have peace ultimately in your house because the way that he's going to receive information is totally different how I'm going to receive information. I'm more emotional. He's more factual. And me knowing that, I can't come to him with, well, babe, I feel like such and such and such. Well, 
he's going to be like, well, I can't relate to that. I don't understand that. Right. But if I can say to him, hey, I feel such and such a way because you did X, Y, Z and yeah. present him with that evidence, I need you to blah, 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 blah. He's going to say, got it. You got it. Next time I got you. I, I understand. And it's going to end that conflict point blank because now he, I'm putting it in terms of him understanding because I'm speaking on his terms. I'm speaking on his level in a way that he understands because I know his temperament. I know how he thinks. I know how he, what he needs. And because I know all of that, I can now present and affect and effectively present my issues without having a full on blowout and ready to head to the court right. for a divorce. And this is where, when when I when I'm working with people, I let them know that okay, oh, our communication is great, yeah. But how is your understanding? Mm -hmm. Because you can communicate all you want mm -hmm. with your spouse, with your children, with your coworkers, with everybody. But if there's no understanding, if there's no reasoning behind your conversation, you're never coming to full terms, right? Mm -hmm. So once you know your temperament and the in you know your family's temperament or anybody temperament that you're dealing with this is why i believe that this is such a great tool to have in businesses it's a great tool to have in house of worships you know churches and just any kind of group of people like you're dealing with people and you're dealing with their growth it is so important to be able to know who they are Right. And not who they're pretending to be or how they want to be perceived. And then this is when you start to lack, because once you start to be something that you're not, it gets so tiring. You become overwhelmed and you become explosive. Then you become angry. Then that's how conflict starts. You know, and then you wonder why you still have like, how many times do we have people in our offices where it's like, well, I told them. And, and oh my God, we, we say this over and over and over. How many times do I have to say this? Right. Mm -hmm. How many times are we going to have this argument? I mean, how many times have we said something like that to, well, it's because you aren't effectively communicating that in a way that that other person, whether it's a spouse, a friend, a child, you know, we're not saying it in a way that they are getting it and they're understanding it. Yeah. So if they can't understand what you're saying and what you're feeling, because you're not presenting it in a way that they hear you. Now that also works on the other end as well. Even though my husband knows that he is very factual, he also knows that I'm very emotional, right? So he has to put on his emotional ears, whether he's emotional or not, he still has to meet me halfway. But because he knows I'm emotional, mm -hmm. right? He's going to make an effort to understand my emotions, right? Doesn't mean that he's going to get it, but he's going to make an effort to do that because he knows that that's how I am. Yeah. Or if he speaks to me in, in conflict, he's going to say, remember when I made you feel like this, that's how I'm getting right now. You know what I mean? So he may speak to me in terms of that too. Yeah. So, you know, we continue to have conflict and we continue to, because we can't effectively communicate if we don't know our temperament. Right. And I mean, we're not to express our needs. Right. That was going to go there. You know, when it comes to our needs, right, there, there are going to be a lot of times that people can't meet our needs. There are going to be a lot of times yeah, that we can meet our own needs because mm -hmm. again, there's that part of our spirit that only God can meet those needs. Absolutely. And that's why when you know yourself and you're, you're learning how not to set the high, the bar so high, right? Because you know that those are very, it's like, it's not realistic. Those right. are, those are expectations that you're creating for people that mm -hmm. are so high that not even you can meet them. Mm -hmm. So just allowing yourself to understand that, that maybe as a melancholy, my standards are up here. I'm constantly going to be let down because again, mm -hmm. I'm setting the bar so high up that the only one that will ever be able to meet that bar is my relationship with God. Absolutely. And I'm glad you said that because on your APS, um, if you are, say, for example, sanguine compulsive in an area such as inclusion, right? You have a compulsive need to be accepted by others, right? Mm -hmm. And that need can never be fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. So you are always going to have that feeling of, I need to be accepted. I need to be loved. I need to be pleasing to people and and you're going to have that compulsive need and when you're compulsive in an area and you know you're compulsive in an area you have to automatically bring that 
compulsivity underneath the authority of God and be like, Lord, I need you to put me in check when I have that compulsive, that, that compulsivity rears its ugly head. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just gonna be honest with you. I have uh, in control, I'm melancholy compulsive. So I really don't like it when people have tell me what to do because I want them to stay in their bubble. I'm never going to tell you what I think you should do unless if you ask me. And then, then still, I really don't care if you do it or not. Right. right? And But I have that compulsive need for you not to tell me what to do. Right. So that can make me stubborn, really stubborn and immovable. That can make me and change me even to be um, setting up that that bar so high where to myself and to others also to look competent in front of everybody else I have a compulsive need to look competent not to be a perfectionist per se not to get it all right but to make it look like I know what I'm doing yes. and that's yes. that compulsive need and it's okay not to know what you're doing right. so you have to constantly especially with that compulsivity to put that underneath the authority of the of the word of God because that can be a major area of weakness if because that compulsivity can never be met by people no matter how much you try no matter how much you push that compulsive need even in a in a, an area of affection think of it in an area of affection if you're a sanguine compulsive okay. constantly pulling on your spouse for that need of affection mm -hmm. that will never ever be met so nothing that they can do will ever be enough and you know this is something that i've seen before in and that you're talking about sanguine compulsive or even just a sanguine, like a, you know, medium number in a sanguine that one person is never enough. Mm -hmm. You know, like they have to be entertained by so many people when they're single or, or not, and just getting that much attention and it's still not being met. It's like that need for attention and affection, it's not being met because you you don't under you you don't even understand yourself. Sometimes you need to learn how to love yourself first, so you can meet that need for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of people that don't love themselves, and that's mm -hmm. why they're constantly looking for that love and affection Ooh. and appreciation from so many different people. Mm -hmm. You know, and and going back to the control area that you mentioned, the melancholy compulsive. You know, one thing that I like to work with, you know, with people with that temperament is to allow other people to know that that that's a lack and that's a that's a weakness that you deal with that you know what I work better with encouragement if you would encourage me to do something rather than telling me what to do I'll be able to to work better you know mm -hmm. I'll be more satisfied if you came and you you know a child you know I I, I work with with children a lot and it's one of the things that I tell my parents all the time you know you're going head to head with your kid because he's a melancholy or he's a choleric, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they don't like being told what to do. So this is where you, you, you experience rebellion. You know, yeah. you just learn how to give your child options, learn how to give them a way of for deciding for themselves, because again, they're dealing with a temperament that is so strong that needs to be built up and needs to be taught. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm so glad you're talking about this because I think when we were talking individually or, or off of the camera, we were deciding what we were going to talk about. And um, parenting is to know your child's temperament is crucial yeah. because your approach to each child is going to be different. And it should be because yeah. they are individuals, right? And I think it was so funny because like, I remember like our parents' generation, right? They're like, well, no, we you're, you're going to do what I say, when I say, how I say it, you know, and as I agree with that to an extent, you know, because you are the parent, there's just different approaches that you're going to take. And I, and I know that I probably will get slack for this, but I'm going to say it anyways, right? Um, how I have two boys and how I approach those two boys are very different. Mm -hmm. Me knowing their temperament and their area of control specifically Mm -hmm. right when I need them to do something in the house I approach them both very different mm -hmm. my melancholy um uh, child will um I have to present it like a question mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to be controlled mm -hmm. right so if I were to tell him go clean up this your room or go do this or go do that it's not going to work Number one, I, I'll say to him, hey, um, this weekend, 
will you be around to help clean the bathroom? Right? Yeah. Um, in other words, are you going to be home or do you have plans or whatever? And I'm getting it across that, hey, we are going to clean this bathroom. But I'm presenting it in a way that like still he thinks that he has control over it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm going to say to him, hey, what time today would be a good time for you to go downstairs and clean up the basement? Mm -hmm. uh, could you do it before four o'clock? Yeah, no problem. And it won't raise an issue because he thinks he still has control. I'm presenting right. it in a way that he thinks he's got control. Now, my cleric is I have to put it in terms of a goal for him. Son, if you want to play your video games, mm -hmm. you, that's your goal to play your video games. You have to do X, Y, and Z first, mm -hmm. right? So the approach is very, very different. And some people are like, well, how, why are you asking your kid to do this? Well, if I don't want World War Three to break out in my home, and if I want my kids to receive it and actually do what I want them to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to meet their temperament need to be treated with respect and say, hey, when can you do this? Right. I'm still getting it done. Mm -hmm. My approach is just different. Right. And now you have a peaceful home. Your kids are not rebelling and you're building them up in a way where they're going to have their own decision. Because again, everything that your kids will be out in the world, they learned it at home first. Mm -hmm. So once they learn themselves, then they learn how to follow rules and boundaries they're not going to have a problem outside in the real world, right? Because our homes are their training field. So Absolutely. how you train your child at home is going to determine what kind of future they will have, right? I mean, like, yeah. A melancholy is super organized. A melancholy likes to have things in order, you know? And again, we've always talked about this because both of our boys are the <laughs> same temperament, right? Yep. And with my oldest, I always had to plan ahead. So mm -hmm. I had... A, a sheet of chores of what we do through the week because he needs to know what he has to do for the week I didn't give him an option you know but that's just my temperament too you mm -hmm. know I, I don't give the option I give it to the choleric the, the melancholy I approach them in a way where these are the chores mm -hmm. it has to be done before x y and z time mm -hmm. how are you gonna do it when you're gonna do it you're just going to do it, right? It's you, gonna get done. You're, it's just going to get done because those Here's are your task list. Here right. And again, knowing that our cholerics, right, we have to approach them with either punishment or reward, right? And usually mm -hmm. it works. The reward work works better. And like you said, right? Well, we have to, the weekend is coming up. You mm -hmm. said you wanted to do this. So this, 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 this has to be done. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you see the approach is so important. And again, with, the, with all the different kinds of temperaments, it's always going to be a different approach. I mean, I mean, we're talking in college right now. Right. And it's so funny. I'm so happy that I have the, the temperament tool, you know, because my oldest um, melancholy. Right. He's a triple melancholy um, for those of you um, who are listening. But um, he we're trying to decide on which, which college and you can just see the stress because it's an unknown area. Yes. He's procrastinating. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know that I've got to tell him, Hey, by this day, we need to make a plan. We need to make a decision by this date. He's like, I can't think about this right now. I can't think about this. It's, this is too stressful. And he starts, and you can tell when that melancholy starts getting a little stressed. And that way you as a parent can say, okay, let me let off a little bit. Let me let him breathe. Let me let this soak into him. He knows he has to get it done. And now I'm going to pull back and I'm going to allow him to have that, that regeneration time. Because mm -hmm. that's really important to a melancholy, getting, being regenerated and allowing time to think. But I'm going to back off because if you push a melancholy too hard, two things might happen. Number one, you're going to get that sarcastic biting disrespectful and you're gonna like you're gonna be jolted right mm -hmm. or two they're gonna get super angry and the angry of a melancholy is brutal like, it's brutal <laughs> it's rough so knowing that it also allowed me to teach my son that hey you can go to zero to 100 in like negative two seconds so you need to learn now how to control that anger as opposed to outside 
when somebody approaches you and approaches you disrespectfully, how you can roll yourself back and be like, okay, to nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, let me walk away. Right. You know, as opposed to getting into altercation. So man, knowing your child's temperament is, I would say, know your spouse's temperament or actually know yours, know your spouse's and then know your kids. Right. Because I mean, that is, you know, crucial. One thing that I want to add to that, because I wouldn't want um, the viewers to get confused with this, because again, we're not trying to justify our behavior with our temperaments, right? Correct. We don't want to cripple our kids to the point where we understand them, but the world does not, mm-hmm. right? So just allowing them to know their areas of weaknesses is the Absolutely. most important thing because they will encounter people that are going to tell them what to do. You know, mm-hmm. they're not going to have the grades that we have as parents at mm-hmm. a job, mm-hmm. probably a spouse, friends, and their colleges and their careers and, you know, in different areas. So preparing them to know that because you're dealing with this tendency, you have to work on that area where mm-hmm. not everybody is going to do it the way you want them to do it. So mm-hmm. teaching them how to have grace for other people and having yep. patience and having that understanding that there is some sort of authority out there, you know, anywhere you go. I mean, you want a license, there's authority. You want a wife or in in in, in or a husband, there's authority. There's there are so many ways to submitting to authority that every temperament has to learn. Everything. And, and it comes down to respecting, right? And uh, and knowing that not everybody's going to know me. Not everybody's going to understand my needs. Therefore, I will learn how to meet my needs accordingly. Mm-hmm. And if my needs go unmet, I'll have the emotional intelligence to know what to do when that happens. Mm-hmm. Right? Because that's so, the bottom line. That's the goal. Absolutely. The, absolutely. Goal, the goal would be learning to have that emotional intelligence alongside with your thoughts right we have to control our thoughts we have to control our actions and we have to learn that our weaknesses do not control our actions right Mm -hmm. and even our strengths you know our our strengths shouldn't control our actions either because we have to learn how to be humble in in our own ways right so there are things that you're gonna have to practice again every temperament needs growth Mm -hmm. and that's the whole the whole point of knowing your temperament it's growing in areas that you're lacking Right. Especially if you have a blended temperament, blended mm-hmm. temperament, you're constantly going to struggle with internal conflict and you're going to have a lot of un- like needs that are going to go unmet because you don't even know what you want or how you want it or what mm-hmm. you want to do. You don't know at that time <laughs> you can change from moment to moment. And, and, and it's so it's important that you understand those things about yourself. And this is the only way that you will come into closure with yourself. And who I am, how I like to do things, how I like people to get their things done and how to have grace for everybody that does not know that. Right. I mean, just look at your job. You know, your boss doesn't know your temperament. Right. So this is good even for yourself, not only for us to teach our kids, but Mm -hmm. also for ourselves. Not everybody is going to know your temperament. Like you said, right. This isn't good. This isn't a time for you just because you you had know your temper to just throw your hands up like I said before and be like, well, this is how I am. People need to accept me for who I am. And that's that. And that's that. And that's that. Mm-hmm. There are things that we need to learn. And here comes in that learned behavior, right? There are things that we need to learn that are, are respectful according to society, you know, um, just to be able to be a functioning um, positive citizen. And, and listen, God is, it's how Jesus tells us in his word that, you know, we need to go out and preach the gospel, right? That doesn't mean with our, just our words, but that means with our actions and who we are. So if we know that we have a propensity to get angry or sarcastic, we need to put that in check, especially if our boss is telling us what to do and we don't like to be told what to do, right? So we have to learn and, and ask God, hey, God, you know, help me with my anger, or help me with my sarcasm, you know, because it could be really cutting, it could be really hurtful, you know, you can't take that back, you know? Um, So like you said, just knowing who, who you are, knowing who your family, like who your kids are, like knowing, just knowing temperament in general, you know, I mean, there are times where I'm at school and I'm interacting with somebody and um, I don't know their temperament, but I 
do know their temperament because I, I'm versed in it. You know, I'm trained in it. Um, so I know how to, it's so funny because people are like, well, how can you talk to your boss like that? Because, you know, uh, they don't deserve that respect. They don't deserve, you know, and, and you're right. They may not deserve it. However, but I am professional. I've learned to be professional and how to communicate. And I can tell how sh this person is going to receive information. So I'm going to present it and wrap it in a way that is receivable. Right. right? Um, they, and just to throw a little nugget out there, just to throw a little nugget out there, <laughs> there is no better way than getting along with people than by giving them a compliment. Right. Absolutely. Everybody does well with compliment, even though there are temperaments that need to be recognized and complimented. Yes. And there are others that like it. Right. Who doesn't like to be recognized? Who doesn't like to be, you know, um, they have gratitude for people. Right. But there mm -hmm. are a lot. Of, there's two temperaments that need it the most, not as much as a supine, but a sanguine likes their recognition, right? They like to be recognized in the things that they do. But a supine, if you don't recognize them, if you don't see what they're doing, they would flip on you like you have no idea. I mean, they would grow into this bitter person and be hurt and resent you for the rest of their lives. So just allowing yourself to recognize people and be, be grateful for the things that they do for you it's like this fix our that relationship. Cleric too. That cleric needs to be recognized. You know, well the done. cleric needs to be recognized as well. Because and then you know what? Because remember the, the cleric and the supine are right there. Opposites. The right. opposite. So you gotta be careful if you're a cleric compulsive, you might switch into a sentence into a supine and might wanna be might have that need for that recognition as much as a supine will, you know. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, this is going to be um, a conversation. I mean, it's just so rich in information when There's it comes so to much. Documents. It's so much because there is so much that we're not talking about, you know, just the, you know, going from one temperament to the other, just switching up and, and behaving a certain way because you're under pressure, because you're um, because you're 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 depressed and then you, you're going to behave as a different temperament if mm -hmm. you're compulsive. Absolutely. Oh, so, I mean that, but that's just another topic for another day. Because and and so much you in can it. even, even though you are um, maybe supine in inclusion, that can seep into your area of control, or that can seep into your area of affection. Mm -hmm. It depends on what's going on in the situation, and it just all can just meld together. And it's so funny because um, there are times where. <laughs> You tell me you're like a supine right now. You're not a supine because I'm saying grind in the room, Kali. And those two mixtures together, if it mixes, it can present as a supine. You know, so just having like, uh, just knowing that for me, I just temperament is just so interesting, and there's so much information that we can't possibly do it in this short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully we can do a part two eventually, but uh you know, definitely I mean, so there's so many, much for temperament. So many areas to touch on, right? And so definitely, you know, we 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 are here to help everybody that is wondering more. If you're interested in in finding out what your temperament analysis would would be, or if you're having trouble with a with a teenager, because you know, usually through the teenage years, when you start to see your child start behaving as his temperament or her temperament, because when they're little, they kind of adapt to the mom and the dad. But once they start to grow, they start to develop their own. You might see it when they're little, but it completely comes out in those teenage years. And this is the reason why parents are saying that it's the hardest age because the rebellion comes in because they're, they're starting to find themselves. It's like they start to have their own voice. They start to make decisions for themselves you know, and, and it's not rebellion. It's just that they're trying to discover who they are and make decisions for themselves because mommy or daddy did it for me before. So psychology calls this identity. This mm -hmm. in developmental psychology, um, they talk about the different stages and during the teenage years is the identity, like that middle school age kind of years that's when they're developing their identity and who they are and discovering what they like and what they don't like. And they're, they're having that, that time of developing identity. And that so, is your temperament. 
because your identity is your temperament because this is how you were created. Your temperament is exactly who you are. And there is no right or wrong temperament. I mean, it's beautiful. It's this is who you are and embracing who you are and just learning to love who you are makes it so much easier because now you really have the desire to walk in that path of I want to, this is who I am and I love myself and I accept myself and I like to do things a certain way and I just need to grow in areas that I'm lacking and just be able to, you know, control my needs in, in other areas. And this is beautiful because again, if we are already struggling enough, not knowing, mm -hmm. I mean, knowing, I'm, I'm sorry, knowing our temperament, imagine those people who don't know their temperament and they don't understand themselves. It's so much harder. Mm -hmm. So again, I want to encourage everyone that is listening to us to reach out to Nicole, reach out to me. Um, what's, what's your email address? Uh, they can reach me at carecounseling317 at gmail.com. You could also find me on Facebook um, under care counseling. Awesome. So I'm going to make sure that I write down her information on the bottom of the video. Please reach out to us if you have any more questions. If you've done your temperament and you need to brush up on certain things, if you're dealing with things that you don't understand, please reach out to us for a free consultation and we can move forward from, from there on. If you're having a child, if you're having problems with your child or your marriage and there are things that you're not understanding, it's the lack of communication, the just just knowing your temperament and, and just allowing yourself and teaching yourself about these tools because that's what it is you know the, the tool to know how to become better and have a better relationship with your loved ones and the people around you it's I mean it's it's very vital so I invite you guys to just reach out to us and connect with us and until next time bye bye